Hey, members of the Warm Ohana, this is a little emergency video that I have to have a little talk with you right now. Um, all worms are not alike. There's two basic groups of terrestrial earthworms among the 18,000 species here on the planet. And the ones you now know from your worm bin are called the epigeic worms. They live on the surface of the soil. Epi means a pond, geic refers to the earth. They live up on the surface. They, in nature, process manures, leaf litters, and so forth. And um, there's the other worms that live underneath the surface called the endogeic worms. And their job is basically tunneling around, looking for bits of food and aerating the soil. These two different groups of worms are not interchangeable. In other words, if you put your epigeic worms, your composting worms, into potted plants, into garden, into the lawn, into any soil environment, they're gonna be dead within 20 minutes. They cannot tolerate soil environments. They do not have the right equipment to deal with the drier, harder, tougher life of the soil. Think about it. They've been living, you know, pretty cushy life in your worm bin, getting watered every day, fed all this wonderful food. It's cushy and rich and nutrients in there. And these guys just eat, poop, and make babies. It's a pretty easy life. That does not translate, translate to life in a potted plant, a garden, or a lawn. So if you have already transfer your worms, please forgive yourself, but you've killed them. We all kill worms and we're sorry about it. Just forgive yourself. But now you know, please everybody, your worms from your composting system need to stay in your composting system, go to another, or come back to the school and we'll take them back on where they will stay at the school, go on with their lives, eating, pooping, and reproducing. And by the way, making a lot of money for the schools. So please don't kill your worms, okay? Um, sorry that I didn't get this message out to you earlier, but I've been around worms so long, I was just thinking it's common knowledge that there's two different kinds of worms that do two, two different jobs, but it's not common knowledge, but you know now. So thanks very much. Keep your composting worms busy composting. Some of you have done such an amazing job of growing your worms and you have this huge dense colony and you've got enough to share because you know they'll fill that puka, but your worm colony is going to grow to match the amount of food waste that you're generating. So your colony is very specific to your household. So if you have a lot of worms in there, you have the food waste to support them. You do not need to call your colony. They will um, balance out themselves based on the food waste available to them and the space. When they run out of food and they run out of space, they'll stop reproducing, they'll stabilize their colony. It's great to have a dense colony. I run one to two, maybe one to three pounds of worms per square foot of surface area. So that's a real dense colony and, and it's, it's dense for some great reasons. One, they're gonna go through your food waste much faster and they're gonna create finished vermicast much faster and uh, it'll, be, it'll be more processed. So it's great to have a dense colony. That is what you want. So if you have a lot of worms in there and you're thinking, oh, it's too much, it's not too much. They're gonna balance based on food waste and space. So leave it to them and let your colony be as big as it can get. They're just gonna do their job better and a little bit faster. So don't worry about dense colonies. That's the way these worms roll. Hey, we're Mohana. Oh my gosh, I've been so enjoying getting your harvesting data and seeing those fantastic pictures. Keep it coming, keep it coming. About half of us have completed our harvest and sent in some pictures, but I want to see everyone. So please, in the next few weeks, if you complete your harvest, send us the data and send us the photos. It's just so much fun to see your big balls of worms and your big smiles and your big buckets of vermicast. It's just great. So please, let's keep going. You know, no reason to stop now. And I especially want to thank all of you that have shared your worms with a friend and have spread the worm. This is the kind of community spread I absolutely love to see. And we're going to be starting um, another group of uh, another worm ohana for the larger community, but we're going to keep our current pioneer worm ohana of our 50 families. So please 
keep on sending your data. Keep weighing your food. Yeah, keep doing harvest and sending us your results. We're going to keep this data going and this exciting slideshow going. I hope for years and years and years to come, when you pass on your worm colony to your grandchildren, they will have your logbook, they will have your profile, they will know the whole history of the worm colony generations from now. So you're doing an incredible job. I'm so impressed. I'm so thrilled. Let's keep it coming. So if you have any issues, get in touch directly with Augusto, but we'd love for you to keep submitting your data. It's very, very fun for me to watch those numbers go up and I hope it's fun for you too. So keep it coming. We absolutely love it. The endogeic worms are certainly more familiar to us and much more celebrated because of the wonderful things they do. And I have a great poem about an endogeic worm, an earthworm, the ones that are underneath the soil, goes like this. It's by John Updike and it's entitled Earthworm. We pattern our heaven on bright butterflies, but it must be that even in earth heaven lies. The worm we uproot when turning a spade returns, careful brute, to the peace he has made. God blesses him. He gives praise with his toil, lends comfort to me, and aerates the soil. I don't know any poems about composting worms. Maybe you can write one for me. Let us know. Be creative.